Hey guys, welcome to Science Class with Mr. Reynolds. Today we're going to go over Newton's second law of motion. Now what this says is acceleration is produced when a force acts on a mass. The greater the mass of the object being accelerated, the greater the amount of force needed to accelerate the object. It doesn't kind of bother you when these scientists and physicists, they write their theories and laws, but they don't write them for kids to understand. That's kind of unfortunate. So that's my job. I'm going to do that. I'm going to put it in words that you'll understand. All this is saying is that the, the more mass something has, uh, the more energy you need to put into moving it or accelerating it. And the less mass something has, the less energy you need to put into moving or accelerating it. That's pretty much it. Okay? So let me give you an example. All right, so here we are at Lowe's. I have to get some mulch for a landscaping project I'm doing at home. And I'm going to put it on this cart. Since it's on wheels, it can be moved with, uh, with ease. Very little energy effort for me to get it moving or accelerating. Okay? So now I'm going to get three bags of mulch. Okay, these weigh about 25 pounds each. Okay, so it's 75, 85 pounds. Now I'm going to try to move this cart. It takes more effort, more energy. I need to add more energy to accelerate it. And that's it. That's all that we're doing here. So this is just a simple everyday use of Newton's second law of motion. Um, the more mass something has, the more energy you need to put into accelerate it. The less mass it has, the less energy you need to put into accelerating it. You probably do this all the time anyway. Okay, guys, we have to deal with some math. I know, ah, math, but this isn't difficult math. Whenever you talk to somebody who is in physics and you ask them about Newton's second law, the equation they're almost always going to give you is this, force equals mass times acceleration. But you're not always going to have all the variables, so I'm going to show you the three different ways to come up with the right answer. Okay, now we've got acceleration equals force over mass. The way we have to write this, I have it written up here, okay? Acceleration is always going to be written in meters per second squared, and here's why. Okay, I put an X here next to the Newtons uh, because that's force, and I, the X is just for an unknown quantity. It's just a variable. If I put a number there, people tend to focus on that number, and I don't want that to happen. So just put XN, and then X number next to kilograms, okay, because that's what you're dealing with here. Force is in newtons and mass is in kilograms. So the way they write uh, the newtons here is going to be kilograms times meters per second squared, okay? So that's what you have over here. When you're trying to find the newtons, which is a force, remember in class I had fig newtons and I didn't force you to have one, so force newton, okay? Um, Force equals mass times acceleration. Well, mass is written in kilograms. Acceleration is written in meters per second square, which is why you have that. Now, in these kind of math problems, and you guys have dealt with this before in math class, whenever you have something up here and down here, they cancel each other out. So that's why it's just going to be written in meters per second squared for acceleration. Okay, so for this first one, most of these are really simple. You could probably do them in your own head. And if you want to pause the video and write these problems down and then try to solve them on your own, I'll have the answers later on, okay? So what we'll do is we're going to take um, 44 newtons, which is the force up top, 44 newtons divided by 2 kilograms, okay? So you've got 44 divided by 2 equals, right, 22. 22 what? I set it up there. Meters per second squared, okay? It's that easy. This is not rocket science. That's going to be Newton's third law. Okay, so let's do another one here. The next one, force equals mass times acceleration. So we're going to take mass, which is 2 kilograms, okay, times the acceleration, which is going to be 24 meters per second squared, okay, and what's 2 times 24? You've got 48. Okay, and this is just written in Newtons. Okay, that's pretty simple. Last one down here, we're going to try to find the mass. Okay, so mass equals force over acceleration. So, force, we've got 4 
divided by 8. And what is that going to give us? That's if you do the equation on a calculator or whatever, it's going to bring you out to 0.5 kilograms. Okay? Not too difficult. So go ahead, maybe pause the video here and write these down. Try to figure them out. This is really good practice. Okay, so here are the answers. All right, I've color coded them because <laughs> you know how I am in class. Everything's got to be color coded so it is more visually impactful and aesthetically pleasing. So these are the answers to these. If you got a wrong answer, all I can say is just try it again on the calculator because the math doesn't lie. All right, so go ahead and double check your answers. Make sure you got them right. I'm sure you did. Okay, so here you have the answers to the force equals mass times acceleration in the purple ink. I guess you would call that plum. So there you go. Check your answers. Make sure you got them all right. So here you have the answers to the m equals f over a equation. Okay, it's really important that you put the notation after the number. In mass, it's always measured in kilograms. In Force, it's always measured in newtons, and with acceleration, it's always measured in meters per second squared. Okay, if you just write the number down and not the notation after it, technically it's not correct, okay? So you really have to pay attention to that, do the right thing, focus, okay? Not too hard, not too hard, um, and that's pretty much it. Thanks for coming. See you next time.